Hey y'all, I am so crushed by today's verdict. I feel so bad for Jennifer. I feel so bad for Shannon. This was such a big case. And I think that Shannon really tried hard. And I hate the fact that her not so average methods are probably going to be up for everybody pulling her apart on why Jennifer lost. And I really don't think it had much to do with her unconventional ways of trying the case, as I think it's such a hot button issue. And I think it's sad because I think that, you know, all that I noticed whenever I saw Shannon, <coughs> excuse me, have her little mini meltdowns or whatever was just a really honest, authentic defense lawyer going up against a really big, bad prosecution in this case, because the country is so fed up of all of these senseless deaths. I mean, what is it now, like 300 school shootings since Columbine? And I just really feel that, yes, Jennifer really did not do things right. That's for sure. I've never once said, oh, she was a great mom. Never would I say that. But I think that had they given her a non-guilty verdict, I think that the country still would have fared so much better because I think that it would have been like close call. And parents would have started saying, whoop, we better, you know, start getting more involved in our kids' life because the next case, they might be able to get a conviction. So I think it would have been just as effective had they found her not guilty in terms of the message that it sent. But I was listening to some of the commentators and they really didn't touch so much on the fact that she was a bad parent or a neglectful parent. But just did she have a duty to protect? And she failed at that. But the thing I'm confused about, but I will probably get some answers when I watch more, is if that wasn't a law on the books already, that her child is not supposed to be able to have access to the gun without a gun lock and all that, if that law wasn't on the books, I really don't understand. But you know, I hate to waffle about things I don't know. So I'll just suffice to say that, yes, I am crushed to my core. Uh, the last time I felt this bad was for Justin Ross Harris, because I felt that by them bringing in so many of his sex addiction issues, the jury just, you know, sent him to fry. But luckily, his conviction has been overturned. And he is not any longer convicted of the murder of his son, which I was waiting for years for him to get to the appellate court and all that. And he did. And he did get it thrown out. And the prosecutor said they're not going to retry him. So he's now just serving term time for sexting with a underage girl, which is I think he has like another six or seven years, which is still a lot, but compared to what he was facing, I'll take it. So I was really depressed when he got convicted, even though I did not find him to be a sympathetic figure. But whenever I see piling on or, you know, just everybody just so outraged that they just find any reason to hate somebody or to slander or to just get, you know, so indignant and criticize and judge people that they have no idea what's going on in their lives. And, and so I'm an advocate for that, I guess. But anyway, I feel really bad for Shannon because, like I said, I think that people are going to use this as an excuse to say she's not a good lawyer, which I totally don't think is true. And I know it's going to be really hard for her to you know, get over this because you could tell just how passionate she was and how much she cared. And with all those cards that she had, they were so worn out during her closing that you could tell that she must have practiced with those cards because they couldn't have been cards from another 
trial. They were specifically for this trial, but they were so worn and bent. And I think she really, really gave this trial her all and she failed. And I think that's really sad. So I feel bummed about that. And I certainly feel bummed for Jennifer. But you know what struck me so weird about this trial, which I don't know, maybe... I don't know, but I know I stayed tuned for six months watching the theater shooter trial and there were so many victims and they were all paraded into court and they all were, you know, their stories were told and so compassionately and the parents, the victim impacts. Now, maybe there'll be some at sentencing, but the way this trial unfolded, I had such a hard time summoning up my my sympathy because they were like they weren't even really touched on just named at the end of the trial and a couple of times throughout but it just felt like such a political move to me because the prosecutor seemed so malicious and it didn't seem like they had they never mentioned the victims families they rarely mentioned the victims themselves and when you watch the movie theater shooting trial That was all that was talked about. It was like the parents, the friends, how in love they were. And you really felt like the victims were in the courtroom. And you couldn't help but think, you know, how could anybody just go and shoot people in the theater like that? But in this trial, I don't know. I just felt the victims were absent. But that's just me. You can, you know, put something in the comments if you agree. But suffice to say that, like I said, I'm pretty bummed and I was going to rewatch the trial if she had gotten a not guilty verdict. But now that she didn't, I'm just going to feel sad and I don't want to watch it and wallow in the sadness. And it's so, you know, it's so weird because right all day I was in a chat and I kept saying like, you know, her life is over either way. I mean, look, she's got nothing left. She has no home to go to. She has no family to go to. She has no money. She has no job. And, you know, I was just feeling like even if she wins, she loses. And then somebody in the chat had said, well, you know, if she gets a not guilty verdict, she could write a book about, you know, everything, maybe a help book to parents and that's true and she could donate the proceeds and that would have been a a feel good for her I'm sure and then somebody had said that she you know maybe could even sue for wrongful persecution but (laughs) she can't do that now and the last thing they said that made me say yeah you know she could get her life together when she if she's found not guilty they were saying that her love of horses and how much she understands and everything, maybe she could go work in a horse farm or run one. And I know that would be a beautiful life, you know, and give you time to really regroup and ponder your life and maybe, you know, make amends for it, give to the community. I don't know. But I was hopeful that if they gave her a not guilty verdict, that she would definitely turn it around and be humble but that was not to be and you know the last thing I'll say is one of the things that so many people harped on when she said if I had to do it over again well two things she had said if I had to do it over again I wouldn't do anything different and you know it troubles me that they zeroed in on that and really found fault with her saying that because she was on the stand to tell the truth. And I believe that she said that, meaning she didn't really see where she could have done something different. And she was trying to be honest and say that she really searched her heart and her mind and said, what what should I have done? What could I do? I mean, yeah, Monday morning, morning quarterbacking is always a way, but she, I thought, was trying to be really candid. And I think it backfired on her. I think she should have lied and said, oh, if I had to do it over again, I would never have let my child have a gun. I would have called the psychiatrist in 10 minutes. I would have taken him home and stayed all day with him. I mean, she could have said all these things, but I don't think they would have been the truth. And I and I just feel bad that she was faulted for just kind of being honest. But another thing she did that people didn't talk into 
was when she said that she felt she was a hypervigilant mom or a helicopter mom. And I guess they really should have given her the definition of that so that she could have answered it as truthfully as people would have had. Because I think that she meant that she was always like, where's Ethan? And she's always calling and checking and she's got the school app and she's all on top of that every day. And she's always asking her husband, where is he? And, you know, checking in with a friend. And I think she thought she was a hypervigilant mom, but I think it needed to be explained that a hypervigilant helicopter mom, whatever, wouldn't really take their eyes off their kid for a second because if you do, that's when you miss stuff. And so she really wasn't that much of a helicopter mom or that much of a hypervigilant mom, but I think she was checked in at times. And to her, she was overreacting sometimes or making too big a fuss over things and trying not to on other things. And I think she just hit all that fire on her. And I'm really sad to hear it, but you know, nothing I can do. So just going to accept it and move on. I'm not going to blame the jury. I'm not going to complain or say anybody got it wrong because it is what it is. And And I think the only chance that we really have is for sentencing. And I want to be optimistic. But then on the other hand, I'm thinking, even though the judge seemed really nice and she seemed really understanding of Shannon's shortcomings and indulging at times, but I don't want to be fooled a second time because sometimes the judges that seem the sweetest and the nicest, man, they throw the book at the the defendant and honestly in this case since it's such a landmark case and there's so many people watching I think the judge is going to probably give her consecutive sentences for each count and so even if she were to give her only five years for each one what is that five times four is 20 20 years so I don't really see uh Jennifer getting out of this however I am hopeful that maybe there's some appellate issues because I don't know about you, but when I was watching that trial like the second day or the first day and Shannon was like, can we go to sidebar? And the judge said, yeah. And Shannon's like, you want to go out in the hall? But somehow they never made it there and they just started arguing and bringing all this information out in front of the jury. And I never saw that before. So I think maybe there's something there. And maybe Jennifer will apply for ineffective assistance of counsel because surely, even though I don't think that Shannon performed poorly or, you know, was ineffective, I think that there's certainly something to be said from what people are used to. She definitely didn't have conventional methods and she was very emotional at times and crying after the video and then saying well that had nothing to do with my case that was kind of a misstep so they might be able to get her another trial and that would you know I I would I mean I think the second one would go better but it might not what do I know and uh, then we got the husband's trial and everybody says he has to be really worried now because had she gotten off He might have gotten off, but now he's probably going to go up the river too. So it's just a sad case all the way around. I I don't know. I feel kind of bad and I'm just going to try to put it out of my mind. I'm not going to make any more videos about it. It is what it is and I'll just accept it. And I hope you all can too. Let me know in the comments if there's any kind of... uh, advice I can give to y'all, but uh, don't think there would be because I'm not an advice line. (laughs) Just kidding. I sometimes give good advice. Thanks, y'all. Bye.